Okay, let's keep adding and subtracting fractions. If the denominators can't be factored and they not, are not alike, I have to use both parts, both pieces. So my least common denominator has 3y and it has y minus 2. Remember, this is 1 times y minus 2. That y and that y are not the same kind of thing. This is a term within a binomial factor. This is a factor. So my least common denominator for this problem, I, I don't hope you've noticed this, I tend to write my LCD off to the side so that I can see it. It's a visual for me to see. And so this fraction, the 4 over the 3y, is missing which part over there? That y minus 2. Again, some people shortcut and they just say, okay, you know, go ahead, Pat, and multiply the, the numerator by the y minus 2 in order to get, remember, you are getting a common denominator here. But a lot of people want to cancel those out, and that's the thing you, you've got to avoid. So this is 4y minus 8. Sometimes I'll even go ahead, I'm getting a little lazy, and I'll say, oh, look, it's got the LCD now, and I'll just write that down. I won't keep doing that, but sometimes I'll get a little lazy. And so then the second fraction, the 5 over the y minus 2, is missing the 3y. So I'm going to multiply this by 3y, and they'll say, oh, that's 15y over the LCD, because you multiply top and bottom by that. So again, 15y over y minus 2 times, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and call it LCD, like I did over here. Um, it's both of those. It's the 3y and the y minus 2. But I am adding these two fractions, so 4y and 15y add to be 19y, and then this minus 8 over the common denominator now of 3y times y minus 2. And I always pause to ask myself, can I simplify this fraction? But there's nothing that can be done with that numerator to factor it so that I could remove something, top and bottom. Let's go ahead with another, where the denominators have to be factored. Let you kind of catch up with me. I'll leave that there for a minute. So I have 3x. Okay, so this is a subtraction problem, which is no big deal. I have to remember to add the opposite at the end when I'm all done. But you have to remember when you add and subtract fractions, you've got to factor the denominators only. Everything we've been doing up until this, simplify fractions, multiply fractions, divide fractions, we factored everything and removed common factors on the top and on the bottom. But here you factor the denominators only, so this is the difference of squares, and this one cannot be factored, and you write your least common denominator as each factor, the greatest number of times it occurs in one denominator. So I just need both the x plus 5 and the x minus 5, because the x minus 5 occurs once here and once here. That's the greatest number of times. I don't use it twice. This fraction, the 3x, which has an x plus 5 and an x minus 5 in its denominator, it's all set. It's got the LCD, but this fraction right here, uh, I, I meant to do that for that, that minus sign. I wanted to make myself aware. Um, it has got the X minus 5, but it's missing the X plus 5. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom, but whatever you do, remember you got to call that 4X squared and 20X. Um, so I like to really exaggerate that and pause right there. If this is a monomial and you would like to distribute or think of this as a minus 4x times that, you're welcome to. So you would have a minus 4x squared and then the minus 4x times 5 is a minus 20x. I do sometimes, but when I'm first illustrating a problem like this, I tend to not do that. So I'm just going to multiply the numerators out there and remind myself that it's a subtraction problem. And then I'm going to pay notice to the fact that I have a common denominator now and that with any subtraction problem, I always have to add the opposite of these two. So now I'm going to make that negative and I'm going to make that negative. And now I'm going to add the like terms. So as an x squared term goes, I have just a minus 4x squared. This minus 20x and a positive 3x 
collect to be a minus 17x, and they have that common denominator of x plus 5 and x minus 5. Sure enough, there's nothing that comes out of that numerator other than x, or even a negative x, that would reduce with what's down here, so I'm not going to bother. Let's go ahead to one last problem. It's a subtraction problem as well. Um, we've done something similar to it. And then we'll, we'll maybe come up with one more segment after this. So these two denominators are factored, if you will. They are 1 times t minus 1 and 1 times t plus 1. Or my LCD would be the t minus 1 and the t plus 1. It doesn't matter what order I write that in. So this fraction right here is missing the t plus 1. If anybody is ready, I don't think I'm going to do this, but if anybody is ready to just say to themselves, oh, i got to multiply this numerator by t plus 1, and this denominator is missing t minus 1, oh, i got to multiply that numerator by t minus 1. You're welcome to do that, but just please remember, you are subtracting two fractions, so when you multiply this by the t plus 1 and get the 3t squared, plus the 3t, your denominator now has the t minus 1 in it and the t plus 1. The only reason this might become a little difficult is the next style of problem that we're going to work, which is solving rational equations. It, the goal is to eliminate the denominators, not to get a common denominator. The process is very similar, so you sometimes get them confused. If anybody would like to right now, think of that as a minus 8t and then distribute that and call it a negative 8t squared, and this negative times this negative is a positive 8t over, remember, this denominator now doesn't have just the t plus 1, it's got the t minus 1, because I multiply top and bottom by that t minus 1. And I got rid of my subtraction symbol, so I'm ready to add these. The like terms, the squared terms, add to be a minus 5t squared, and then this 3t and 8t add to be 11t over the common denominator of t minus 1 and t plus 1. And I can't factor anything out of those except for a t. It would do me no good for the denominators because they, I'd have to have a binomial that matched of t minus 1 and t plus 1. So I'm not going to bother. I'm going to pause, let you rest a little bit, and we'll come back and do a few more of these. And it'll be our last segment on adding and subtracting rational expressions.